The story is definitely not new. It's an update. The details are really, really just drastic. Like, you just have to ask, like, what kind of fool would do something like this to kids? And this is why I continue to keep bringing this content to our channel because I want people to really, really wake up and some other things we'll talk about here in a minute. If this is your first time here, let me give you a disclaimer about my content. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And we're getting this update from lawandcrime.com, so they do an excellent job, so shout out to Law and Crime. So a little girl that you guys see on my screen, look, check this out. A 27-year-old man in Texas, Texas taking the L, will spend the remainder of his days behind bars and rightfully so, when y'all here with this, I want to cuss so bad. I've been trying my best not to use the F word because I know that's going to get my channel demonetized. But I really, really be wanting to cuss bad. He tortured and killed his girlfriend's five-year-old daughter in a heinous fashion. And check this out. By inserting thumbtacks. He inserted thumbtacks into this little angel's feet. Y'all see this beautiful little girl. We're going to talk more about her here in just a second. Her name is Mercedes LaSoya. Let me see if I can get a better picture of her up here, right here. He inserted thumbtacks into her feet. And I know people have tried to defend some of these people for how they discipline children. And I would have to ask, what, what person on earth would qualify that as any level of proper discipline did any of y'all mamas insert thumbtacks into y'all feet any of y'all daddies or dad's girlfriend or mom's boyfriend do that to y'all like i don't even understand like where people think to do oh i got some thumbtacks let me jam them up this child's feet like what Not only that, he smeared her face in dog feces. Lord have mercy. Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. And he beat this little baby so badly. She's five years old. Was five years old. He beat her so badly after smearing her face in dog feces that every visible surface on her skin was either cut or bruised. And we're going to talk about the mother here in a second also. Because I think she deserves a life sentence as well. Bexar County District Court Judge Stephanie Boyd on Monday ordered Jose A. Ruiz to serve a sentence of life, which is the proper, proper choice, in a state correctional facility for the 2022 slaying of Mercedes LaSoya court records reviewed by law and crime. So as you guys can see, a lot of these stories are starting to get now as far as the um, the ending to these stories because it takes a while. It usually takes about two to five years before these stories conclude. So oh, prior to being sentenced, a jury found Ruiz guilty on one count of aggravated or, or yeah, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and seven counts of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury or death. Katrina Rose Mendoza, who was Mercedes' mother. So we're going to get her face back up on the screen. Let me see if I can show y'all mom. She's a beautiful little girl. I don't know why the hell they did this to her. That's the mom right there. Katrina Mendoza was also arrested following the child's death and charged with multiple felonies. She reached a deal with the Bexar County District Attorney's Office, where she agreed to plead guilty to one count of assault on a child by omission in exchange for dropping one of the more serious charges, which could have got a life in prison. As for part of her deal, Mendoza was required to testify against her boyfriend during his criminal trial. He would pull Mercedes, and let me, let me warn y'all, because I'm going to give y'all some of the details, so just bear in mind. He would pull Mercedes' hair and cover her mouth and nose. Use thumbtacks on her feet, she told jurors, according to a report from San Antonio ABC affiliate KSAT. 
he would mop the floor with her in your in her urine. What the f He would mop the floor with her in her urine. That's just hard to read. Get her on the ground and drag her in her urine and then put the clothes in her mouth. You couldn't even come up with a horror story that would do some stupid shit like that. And mom allowed it. She knew about it and allowed it. I think she might have actually participated, which is why she wanted to cut a deal. Dr. Rajesh Cannon, who conducted Mercedes' aut autopsy, testified on Monday about her injuries. This child suffered trauma, the doctor said, per Texas Radio, per Texas Re Public Radio. It's extensive from top to bottom and all over the body. An emergency room nurse who was present when Mercedes was brought to the hospital reportedly testified that the little girl had bruises covering her body from head to toe on both her front and back. She was a fighter. She was the second child. Uh, assistant District Attorney Brittany Mitchell told jurors last week, according to a report from San Antonio News Express. Give her to me. I'll show her discipline. But it was abuse. Jose Ruiz took it to a whole new level of cruelty. As law and crime rep uh, previously reported, Mendoza on February 7th of 2022 brought an unresponsive Mercedes to Southwest General Hospital in San Antonio. Doctors attempted to resuscitate Mercedes, but she was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at the hospital. The medical team noted that Mercedes had sustained visible injuries and noted police about the suspicious nature of her wounds. Officers with the San Antonio police responded to the scene, uh, pro, pro, uh, excuse me, responded to the scene, produced a disturbing report about providence, provenance of Mercedes injuries. Let me see. How do you pronounce this word? Let me make sure. Provenance. Provenance. Okay. So, per probable cause affidavit, Mercedes had sections of her hair missing. Lord have mercy. Had sections of her hair missing that appeared to have been ripped out of her head. She also had suffered extensive Bruises and scratches and cuts and swelling over every visible portion of her body. Why did they even have custody of this child? Why was he in a relationship with this woman? Why did he want to stay there and continue to abuse this baby all the way to death like this? But I can guarantee you that the mother wouldn't have gave up custody to the dad. Instead, instead of giving up custody, we have a hashtag called hashtag babies for benefits because you'd have to ask if somebody can treat a child this badly, which that's an AFC hashtag. Why would they keep the kids because they keep these kids because it makes their lives easier because they can get some type of benefits, whether it be Section 8 food stamps, they can keep their little living situation together. A lot of states actually give out car vouchers, whether y'all knew that or not. Google search it. It's a real thing. It could even be. To spite the father, you could also do that to collect child support off of the biological father as well. Just using the kid as a benefit. They clearly don't care about kids. Oh my goodness. She also had cuts and swelling on both of her hands that appeared to be defensive wounds. So she tried to fight back. The child's legs and feet were also battered with the bottoms of her feet having tiny puncture wounds on them. And she was missing. She was missing several toenails. You could get a life sentence if you did this to an animal. Y'all realize that, right? If you were to take a dog or a cat and do this, you could actually get a life sentence for treating an animal, let alone a human life, a human princess, a little bitty baby. 
The victim's legs were covered in bruises, which appear to have been patterned, which is commonly seen when belts or other objects are used to inflict injury. Bexar County Medical Examiner's Office performed an autopsy on Mercedes and told police that it was obvious the victim suffered extreme abuse and torture, according to the affidavit. Mercedes' injuries were so numerous that the medical examiner said that there was no clear or obvious injury that caused her death. So they're basically like they don't even know which part of it killed her. And that's just insane. And I know a lot of y'all might be listening to the story and you're just like, oh, this is this is so hard for me to listen to. It's hard for me to read. You know why I continue to do this? Why I continue to talk about these stories? Because as much as it hurts us to hear and speak about, imagine what Mercedes had to go through. I don't think nothing we ever can listen to while we are paying tribute and homage to her, is nearly as bad as what this baby was forced to die through. Now, in an interview with investigators, Mendoza accused Ruiz of subjecting Mercedes to horrific abuse in the three weeks since she, Mercedes, and her six-year-old daughter moved into his home. Mendoza told police that she witnessed Ruiz shoving dog feces into Mercedes' mouth as she screamed at her, and, and, and did the same thing with a sock soaked in urine. What the fuck, man? She further claimed that Ruiz aggressively pulled the sock from Mercedes' mouth with such force that it, it ripped out a couple of this baby's teeth. Mend Mendoza continued with it. And, and matter of fact, let it think about this. Let me remind y'all. If you go back and watch my original video on this, when I gave a commentary, we didn't even have all of these details at that time. Cause you know, they usually will let this go to court, then put the details out. Then it comes out in the news articles. So initially we didn't even, we didn't even have all of these details. Mendoza continued with shocking allegations of physical abuse and corporal punishment that included punching the child with closed fist while wearing multiple rings. She said Ruiz also forced the child to stand in place while holding heavy objects during a video call in the weeks before her death. She said Mercedes was crying while she held the objects. Ruiz told police that when it came to Mercedes, he merely slapped her on the, on her rear, the ASS, and made her stand in the corner. Of, of course, he didn't do nothing, right? He also blamed all of Mercedes' injuries on Mendoza, the mother, except for the missing portions of hair, which he claimed were pulled out by Mercedes' six-year-old sister, which that, that didn't happen. Mendoza, the mother of sentencing, has not uh, been scheduled yet. She is facing between 5 to 45 years in prison. And to be real with y'all, how can it vary that drastically? I think she needs to get all 45 years. But the likelihood that she could get out in probably 5 years, which is I'm sure that's what she's shooting for, 80% of that, she'll be out in 3 and 3 quarter years. Just you, you. These people don't learn when you when you treat them with kid. That's not even the right term. When you don't give them harsh enough sentences, these people will never learn, and they're gonna turn around, come back into society, and kill another kid. Let me give you guys the uh, the fair usage before we take a look at the news videos. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And just to clarify, brother, no, she didn't sit and watch him do all of this. She actually participated in some of this. Some of that's on record. And a lot of it she definitely knew about and then just let it happen. So, but some of it she did participate in. I think she participated in way more 
than what she actually is claiming. Y'all do me a favor, please hit that thumbs up, share this video so more people can see it, hit that thumbs up. Here we go. Federal Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. It has been more than two years since Mercedes Lasoya's death, but tonight the man convicted of abusing the five-year-old will spend the rest of his life in prison. Jurors sealed Jose Ruiz's fate about 90 minutes ago after hearing five days of testimony, including that of Mercedes' mother and Ruiz's ex-girlfriend, Katrina Mendoza. Our Erica Hernandez has been following this case since the pair were indicted almost two years ago, and she was in the courtroom as Ruiz heard the verdict and his sentence. The family of Mercedes Lasoya in tears as they walked out of the courtroom this evening and just glad this trial is over and they got justice for Mercedes. Maurice was sentenced to life in prison for the death of Mercedes Lasoya. It was a long evening, but jurors only took 45 minutes to find him guilty and 15 to sentence him to life. We spoke with Mercedes' great-grandmother after the verdict, and this is what she had to say. This is an example that... We have to believe in the justice, which is not wasn't easy at first, but I do believe in it now and more than ever. And if you ever see any child suffering, do not hesitate to call police or call authorities. Was justice served today? Yes, justice was served, and I'm very, very thankful to, for that. As far as Katrina Mendoza, she is still facing her sentencing date. She took a plea deal. The max she can get is 45 years. There is no date set for that yet. As for Ruiz, he will now be transferred to a Texas prison where he will serve his term. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not. Now, y'all remember the, uh, the video we did recently where the woman was giving an interview and she was just shaking, shaking like, like she was having a seizure or something? I think that that's maybe that's a thing that liars do when you're sitting in front of a camera or sitting in front of a person and having to recount this story and you're telling a lie. I think that might be the sign of a liar, but she was doing a lot of shaking. Matter of fact, let me see if I can back that up. Let y'all see this again. Right here. Take a look at this. Right here. Watch her shaking. Watch this. As far as Katrina Mendoza, she is still facing her sentencing date. She took a plea deal. The max she can get is 45 years. There is no date. She's doing a whole lot of shaking. Now at six, the verdict is in. The man charged in the death of a five-year-old girl has been found guilty. Jose Ruiz is now waiting to learn his punishment. Ken's Five's Zach Briggs has been covering this trial since the beginning and was in court as the jury's decision was read. Zach, how did Ruiz react? Jose Ruiz didn't have much reaction at all. A stoic face as the lengthy verdict was read aloud by the judge. Take a look. Jury by the defendant, Jose Ruiz, guilty of the offense of injury to a child is charged in count one of the indictment. The jury found Ruiz guilty on multiple counts of injury to a child, one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Over the course of this trial, disturbing pictures and videos of Mercedes Lasoya were shown to the court. Many of these images came from Ruiz's phone. Bruises, cuts all over her body, puncture wounds from thumbtacks discovered on the tips of Lasoya's toes. The state stressing Ruiz was behind a bulk of these cruel punishments, his ex-girlfriend, Katrina Mendoza testified against him during this trial, saying she told him to stop several times, but he refused. Mendoza took a plea deal back in August for her role in her daughter's death. She faces up to 45 years in prison. And now we're in the middle of the punishment phase. Here's one of the family members talking about the fear Mercedes Lasoya felt around her mother and Ruiz. Well, when she got to the house, or when she was at home, she was happy, happy to be back with me, my wife, her brothers just playing around and stuff like that. But when it was time for her to go back over with her mom and her sister, she wasn't so much happy. She wanted to make sure that she was always with Jordan. Now the defense has witnesses on the stand for their part of the punishment phase. A jury could decide tonight on how many years Ruiz ends up spending in prison. The Bear County Courthouse, Zach Briggs, Ken's Five. Thank you, Zach. 
Our top story attend life in prison for the man convicted in the death of five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. She died in 2022 after continuous abuse at the hands of Jose Ruiz. His punishment coming down just a few hours ago. Kent's Five reporter Simone Simpson was in the courtroom and joins us live. Simone. ECs, it's been a long night here at the Bear County Courthouse. Earlier this afternoon, the jury convicted Jose Ruiz on seven counts of injury to a child and one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, after the conviction came the punishment phase with the jury working through most of the night to agree on a sentence for Ruiz. Then just a couple of hours ago, the word of the sentence, the jury deciding Ruiz would spend the rest of his life in prison. Family says the punishment fitting for a man who abused and tortured a little girl as a form of punishment. We talked to Mercedes family tonight. This is an example that we have to believe in the justice which is not wasn't easy at first, but I do believe in it now and more than ever. Mercedes' mom has taken a plea deal in this case and testified against Ruiz. Reporting live from the Cadena Reeves Courthouse, Simone Simpson, Ken's Five. We'll let y'all hear some of this. Actually, I don't think this is going to say much. I want y'all to take a look at this video, though. Just take a look at this. I might be able to make it a little bit bigger. I know I'm having some technical issues, so I'm sorry. I know y'all see it glitching, so y'all bear with me. Let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger so y'all can see it. So this is some of the evidence that they showed in court. And this is not going to have any audio. I just want us to kind of take a look at this. We'll kind of, oh, there are the thumbtacks. Oh, my. Whoa. Let's go back. Right there. Y'all saw that? Thumbtacks. Look at that. Bam. Wow, that is correct. Thumbtacks, push pins. So this is mom's boyfriend who allegedly did all of this, but I'm sure mom participated in a lot of it. Look at that. Push those in that five-year-old baby's feet for what? So there's no audio here. Um, after um, well, a little after bit. getting with the other CSIs, uh, I was tasked with collecting the evidence. So everything that's marked? Y yes, ma'am. And that was a, that was a joint evidentiary search, uh, all of us included. Well, there was a lot of personal effects left, a lot of trash. Um, obviously, somebody had vacated the, the premises. Damn. Look at all of that. Oh, my God. What are some of the things that are standing out to you as you're going through and watching this video again? Just uh, possible uh, uh, evidentiary items, uh, DNA, uh, cleansers and, and cleaners and uh, liner gloves and things and such.
This is a lot of the evidence that was inside the house. Look at that. Oh, my God. That's the baby's hair. Oh, my God. Look at that. I mean, they, every bit of that, they wanted to murder this child. Like, why, though? Just talk to Why would you want to do watching. that? What are objects are you guys zooming in on? So what would this number eight be? Well, number eight would be a used Band-Aid. And this would be number nine, correct? That's correct. Uh, clothing and uh, child's panties. That is creepy. Look at that. And then here at number 10. Uh, liners, glove, glove liners. That's yeah. scary to think, whatever the hell they was doing with those gloves. Yes, Y'all do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up if y'all can, please. Y'all should be able to see me. We still should be good. The sock and the band-aid. Push pins, more push pins. Wow. Thumbtacks. I just thought y'all might find this interesting. Was that a bullet? Jesus, what the what the hell? Looks like a Seven six two, long gun. Yes, ma'am. It looks like a seven six two long gun uh, ammo. And then here at number thirteen, some type of case, some type of. Uh, I'm not too sure what you call it. So I guess I'm assuming this is the police that are walking through here. I wonder if they never had any furniture in there or if they did. They don't look like they ever did. A receipt. Let's take a look at this bathroom. Eat. Y'all think it's forensic investigators? Another sock. Lottery tickets. There is zero. You said they were moving. Oh my God, look at that. Yeah, it was some type of uh, stain uh, that was checked for uh, apparent blood. Wow. Number 17. I wonder More if that's that little girl's hair that they just kept ripping out of her head. That blood in that room had looked like blood on the wall, like it looked like 
like blood. 27 was the sandals. Bathroom. That's the cleanest bathroom I've seen in a dirty house before. I ain't gonna lie. Twenty one was a looked like it was a soiled um, puppy pad. I guess I just wanted to show this because I'm just like, you just don't normally get to see stuff like this. What is that? The sock. Oh, paper torn up. That looks like a bloody sock. A dirty, bloody sock. One or the other. I wonder what's in that trash bag. Look, more hair. Look at that. Matted hair. More hair. That's also that's bad human hair. hair. What, like one of those dog pads or something. Skip through some of this. I believe that it was like uh, upper clothes. garment. Thumbtack, push pin. I see it, right? I think y'all get the idea. Let me just go ahead and end that right there. Just think about, think about how hateful Just think about how hateful you have to be to do this to a baby that can't speak for herself, cannot defend herself against the tyranny of her mother and her mother's boyfriend. And just to just the litany of things that they did literally beat this baby to absolute death. And even then, her spirit was strong enough. She was blessed with a strong fighting spirit that she tried to fight back. And it was just nothing she could do over a prolonged amount of time, however long it was. But I think that they both deserve life in prison. I don't like the fact that you can cut deals just because you can testify against somebody else. Just me, I don't like that. I think that if you played a part in a child's death, I think regardless, like, like, it, like I, I, I believe this, and I'm going to be real with you. I know it's not a legal thing to do, but I think it's just kind of an idea. Since they want to be so sadistic, thank you for taking the words out of my mouth. Make this woman believe that you're going to cut her a deal and tell her, if you tell everything that y'all both did, we'll give you only five years. We'll only give the mother five years in prison. Then turn around and at sentencing and be like, ha ha, we lied. Because of what you did to that kid, now we're going to give you life in prison. I'd love to see that happen. I know this, that's not realistic because that's unlawful. It's just a thought of mine, okay? I can have my thoughts because I want to see everything that happened to this baby happen to them times 10. Every bit of it. 
this baby could speak for herself nor defend herself against the tyranny of her caretakers. And I think that they only use this baby to collect benefits off of her. And I hope that they give this mother the maximum sentence. Minimum sentence, five to 45 years. I just don't like that. They both deserve life in prison. Thank you guys so much for listening to this update. The only other update we'll probably do is to find out how much time the mom gets in prison and maybe some more details about her participation in this, okay? Let me know what you guys think about this story. Thank you.